Hello everyone and welcome back to This Day in History, our nightly look back at a specific day in history where we examine events of a certain day and explore their historical ramifications and consequences. And sometimes we have a little bit of fun along the way. Now, sadly, there's a couple of things we're going to discuss today that are very sad and some one of them in our dev section, where I really get to talk about someone I've been wanting to talk about for a long time, because it combines one of my other loves, which I'll explain when I introduce the topic. So, let's begin this day in history, January the 27th. And on this day, in 1967, the Apollo 1 crew was killed on the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center at then Cape Kennedy, Kent at Cape Kennedy, Florida. And it killed three astronauts, Virgil Grissom, Edward Wright, and Roger Chafee. They were conducting a test on the Apollo 1 module, and a fire broke out, and they were incinerated. Um, they died of cardiac arrest, um, and were exposed to air from the capsule. Now, this grounded the Apollo program until October of 68, and Apollo 7 was the first Apollo mission that actually carried crews into space after this, and, um, it could have set NASA back tremendously. It's amazing that they got men to the moon uh, when they did in July of 69. This happened in February of 67. We launch Apollo 7 in October of 68, and we go to the moon in July of 69. Um... Just a huge condensed timeline, and it's amazing we made it to the moon when we did. Uh, but these became um, men that are remembered throughout NASA on this day uh, in 1967, and it is um, it's amazing. Um, and, and unlike Soviet Union astronaut deaths uh, that were covered up by the government, these were broadcast in the open. The American government was up front about what happened, had a full investigation, and made space flight safer. You can't make it totally safe, but they made it safer. The second... Uh, thing we're going to cover tonight is a birth that occurred on this day. In 1959 in New York City, um, ESPN commentator Keith Olbermann was born. Now, he currently works at ESPN again, and he gained fame with Dan Patrick hosting the um, Sports Center back in the early 90s. Um, to mid 90s, um, and they called it the Big Show. And um, Oberman and Dan Patrick became hits. Um, Oberman would work for Fox Sportsnet, Fox. He would also work for um, ABC News Radio. Uh, he would work for ESPN for a short time again. MSNBC, current uh, television, um, and then back. Uh, to ESPN. Now, I became a fan and aware of Keith Olbermann through his hosting of the MSNBC show Countdown uh, back in the mid to late 2000s. Um, Olbermann also did a series on GQ um, on their YouTube channel in the lead up to the election called The Closer. Um, and after the election called The Resistance, where he roasted Donald Trump on the regular. Um, he retired that series and hasn't commented publicly on politics 
um, since. But um, I became aware about Keith Olbermann because of his MSNBC show Countdown. And kind of at first, Countdown covered irreverent stories. Um, it had five stories. It had the number five story, which was the major breaking news of the day. That was a story they covered first. Then they would have a fourth story, which was a like, the second biggest. The th but the number one story Keith Oberman would cover would always be irreverent, funny, and just humorous. Keith Oberman also instituted, after some controversial comments made by Vice President Cheney at a speech, um, his special comment. Um, and after the death of Peter Jennings. Uh, and this became a recurring theme. I think he overused it. I, I really do. I think it, it became every night. It, it just... It became overkill. Um, after the Bush administration declared major combat operations in Iraq over at some point. Um, I don't remember when, but I know he started it. Um, he said... You know, and since the administration declared operations in Iraq over, and they obviously were not. I mean, he would throw his paper at the television and it would crack, like it'd be cracking. Um, he had a segment called The Worst Person in the World where he would cite three people as the worst person in the world for a particular day. Uh, he later made that into a book, which I have, and from time to time I flip through that book. Uh, just to get a sense of the people that were on the list, and Bill O'Reilly made it a lot. Um, so that's a um, how I became aware of Oberman, and he is back at um, ESPN, um, and he is covering uh, sports and hosting Sports Center, and of course covering the sport he loves, baseball. Some deaths that occurred on this day. Now, I have to introduce this by saying, I'm a professional wrestling fan. Uh, I am currently on a hiatus from the WWE because they can't book their way out of a wet paper bag. Uh, but, I'm a, I'm a wrestling fan. I love it. it it's great. Um, and, one of the all-time greats in the sport of professional wrestling, died on this day, 1993, in Paris. Now, I'm not going to claim that I grew up during the time that Andre the Giant was a huge star. By the time I became a wrestling fan, Andre the Giant was dead. But, I went back, and I've watched his matches, and I've read what people have said about him. I've read what his compadres thought of him and it is hard to find someone that says anything negative about Andre the Giant. Uh, he was a man that loved life. He was a man that loved every aspect of life and being seven foot four and over 400 pounds, uh, Mr. Uh, the Andre the Giant had a high alcohol tolerance. It is reported that once he consumed 119 12 ounce beers in one setting. And that before his match with Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 3, which sent professional wrestling in the 80s on the rocket ship to the moon, um, he drank 14 bottles of wine. And then Hulk Hogan picked him up and slammed him. Although that wasn't the first time Andre had been slammed, but boy, they sure act like it was. Uh, but um, a really great person. Uh, Andre the Giant uh, died on this day in 1993 at 46 in Paris um, of heart failure. Um, and he was in Paris. Uh, 
because his, he was attending his father's funeral. Um, and after he died, he was cremated and uh, he left his entire estate uh, to his only daughter, uh, Robin. And uh, his ashes uh, were spread um, on his ranch in uh, North Carolina. So uh, Andre the Giant uh, died on this day in 1993. That is all for now. I'll see you again tomorrow. Hit that like button. Hit the bell notification icon. Uh, tell a friend. And I will be back. Bye-bye.